Hi, it's Mrs. Heath. I'm here to do some virtual teaching with you this week. My first read aloud that I would like to do is the book that we all received as a gift. And it's a nice Halloween book. I hope you all had a great Halloween. And I'm going to read Room on the Broom. I hope you're all enjoying this book. Let's read it together. If you have your book, you can get it and read it along with me. My title is Room on the Broom. There's our sight word, the, T-H-E, Room on the Broom. There's our little witch with her kitty. Mm, I like this picture because it kind of shows us things blowing around. If you remember the story, you remember how things blew around. My title page, Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson. That means she's the author and she wrote all the words. Pictures by Axel Scheffler. That means he's the illustrator and he did the pictures. Here we go. Do you have your book? You can follow along. The witch had a cat and a hat that was black and long ginger hair and a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. There it goes. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with a hat in his jaws. Who has the hat? He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down on her head, I am a dog as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. There they are. Now she has a cat and a dog on her broom. There they go. Ooh, I see the clouds are getting dark. Over the fields in the forest they flew, the dog wagged his tail, and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held on to her hat, but away blew the bow from her braid, just like that. There it goes. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said as the witch tied her braid in the bow, I'm a bird, as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Do you think she's going to let her? <laughs> yes, cried the witch, so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. So she got her bow back. The bird had it. And now there's a cat, a dog, and there's going to be a bird on her broom. Oh, look at the weather getting worse. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew, the birds shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow, but let go of her wand. Uh-oh, there it goes. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. Hmm, who do you think's gonna find the wand? Then all of a sudden from out of a pond leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely and then said with a croak as the witch dried the wand on the fold of her cloak. I am a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Do you think she's going to let him come on? Yes, said the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew. The frog jumped for joy and... Dot, dot, dot. That means we have to wait to see what's going to happen when we turn the page. So, so far I see she has a dog, a cat, a bird, and a frog on her broom. And the frog is jumping for joy. And... Oh, no! What happened to the broom? I see it's in two pieces. The broom snapped in two! Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. Uh-oh. And there's a dot, dot, dot after scary and loud. Who is making the roar that's scary and loud? 
Turn the page. Oh my, look at that. I am a dragon as mean as can be and a witch with french fries tastes delicious to me. Uh-oh, does he want to eat her? No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon grew near with a giant or with a glint in his eyes and said, just this once, I'll have a witch without fries. Uh-oh. Is he going to eat her? Oh, no. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads, and it had wings like a bird. It was, And its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch, and it said to the dragon, Buzz off! That's my witch! Look at this mud monster that all of her animals made. All of these animals were on her broom, and they made a mud monster. How do you think the dragon feels about that mud monster? Look at the poor witch. He's holding on to her, but wow, he kind of looks scared. Turn the page. The dragon drew back as he started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and it was off through the sky. <gasps> Did he leave? I think he was scared, just like we thought. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat and phew, says the dog. And thank you, oh, thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. So she is very thankful that those animals helped her by scaring that dragon away. She is very thankful and grateful. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom! Wow. So she's making something in her cauldron. They all put something in. And she's saying a little spell. Then out rose dot, dot, dot. A truly magnificent broom. With seats for the witch and the cat and the dog. A nest for the bird and a pool for the frog. <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, what a cool broom that she made from her cauldron. Yes, cried the witch, and they all clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick, and whoosh, they were gone. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a tickle in my throat, guys. <gasps> and that's the end. So in the end, they made a really cool broom with a spell. <coughs> what do you think would be super cool as something else the Brit witch might use on her broomstick. That's gonna be my question to you. Is there something else that the witch needs on her broomstick to make it really cool? Think of something else that could go on this broomstick to help her fly. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a tickle that's not stopping, it's making me cough. But I wanna know what is really cool that you could put on this broomstick to help her fly? Tell me in the comments. That will be your question for the day for Room on the Broom. I hope you enjoyed reading this with me, guys. And I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye-bye.